that guy over there, Morton, anybody know that Morton? But anyway, Morton helped form the Republican Party in 1852, and I'll tell you more about him later on. But anyway, uh, so by him being a friend of Morton, what else have you, and we have some people here in Indiana in 1861, they were called Copperheads. Copperheads. They were sympathetic to the South. And anything the South wanted, they don't like uh, Union, I mean, the Union folks at all here in Indiana. And so they had many, so anyway, so he uh, didn't like the, uh, the Copperheads and stuff like that, so he finally won his freedom by just going back to the Army. Didn't bother him at all. So, so that was that. that, that, was that. Okay, in uh, 1863 in Ebenezer River, uh, uh, what's the guy that was marching down named Sherman or something? Sherman. <laughs> Sherman marched to the sea. Okay. Anyway, uh, 63, Sherman was going to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and so he was an officer. He was a reverend general. So he was responsible for putting a uh, pontoon bridge on this, grid, on this water. And uh, which he did, so Sherman keep his men on the march. Okay, so he pulled all those pontoons, but the uh, things up, and uh, and believe it or not, the slaves were following uh, Sherman, and uh, Johnny Reb was only about two hours from them. Okay, he didn't like the slaves anyway. This guy here didn't. So anyway, he pulled the pontoons up. And the slaves didn't know what to do, what else have you. So finally, Johnny Reb came up, and the cavalry guys came. Believe it or not, cavalry guys had sabers. Everyone had a servant. And they whooped heads and took names and slight people, what else have you. And they jumped in the water and all that stuff that the slaves did. And there was a captain on the other side, and he was so upset with uh, Davis for doing that, he called his uh, senator from New York and complained about that. <coughs> And so uh, the senator called Sh uh, Sherman in and talked to him and what else have you. So Sherman was scared that he would be um, remembered in a bad light. So he said, hey, I know what to do. I'll, I'll get uh, 40 acres of land and give it to the slaves. And that's what he did. And he saw some, sur some mules and horses that were well worn. And he said, hey, give them the mules and horses, too. So that's where we get 40 acres and a mule. <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, when the Civil War was over with, Johnson was uh, in charge of the, uh, was the president then. He was the Tennessean. And he said, no, we ain't giving no mules and 40 acres away. So that was not law. That was not a law. Some people want that to be the law, but it was not the law. I just thought that whipped that out on you. Okay. And he, so he did something else here. There's another guy over there, I'll tell you about his name, Camby. And I'll tell you more about him later on that's connected to Justin D. C. Davis. Follow me. Over here, in 1863, we had a place called Forest Lawn, I don't mean Forest Lawn, uh, Green Lawn. what is his name? Green Lawn. Green Lawn Cemetery. It's on Kentucky and West Street. They call it Diamond Chain. I don't know if you're familiar with the city, I call it Diamond Chain. That's where the first city cemetery used to be. And what happened was that we had bodies stacked up there. You know why all them bodies stacked up in 1863? They had a lot of bodies stacked up there. Johnny Reb was a good shooter. They shoot the squirrels and stuff like that. Anyway, all those people there were stacked there at what we call City Cemetery. And there's 708 of them there. And uh, so we had to have a new cemetery. So our founding fathers who made this the cemetery, they came out here 2.8 miles of north of Indianapolis purchased 240 acres of land and he called it the Crown Hill. Subsequently we added to it, we have now five, 500, five, 550 acres. 550 
help, he needs some help. 555 acres that we have here now, and we're the third largest. So, when 1866 came up there, we took those bodies that were stacked up, believe it or not, they're stacked over there, and we uh, put the soldiers here. This is a, such a soldier's plant. And so, all the people fell in love with Crown Hill Cemetery, and so they used to grab all their family members out of there and bring them over here. Okay. Yeah, okay. The last people that came out of there were Confederate soldiers. 1,616 of them left up there, they left them there uh, till 1933. And believe it or not, uh, when they built Diamond Chain, they used to call on the telephone and say, hey, I got some of your people over here. And we'd call somebody and take them the bones or whatever. The next day, do the same thing. We got some more people here. They didn't need to get all the people, in other words. <clears throat> so anyway, that's what happened. The last people there was Johnny Reb, 1,616. We might have some time to go by and see them. But uh, anyway, Oliver P. Martin, he was a governor, a Civil War governor. He was the second war gen uh, governor we had. The other one was uh, Whit Whitcomb. He was the first of well, the Mexican War. He was the first uh, governor <laughs> who was the war. Anyway, in 1854, sorry, 1854, he helped form the Republican Party. The Republican Party was formed for the sole purpose of ending slavery. The Republican was, yes. And so, uh, he loved the Republican Party and what else have you, and he loved Abraham Lincoln. And uh, so when the Civil War started, uh, he volunteered Hoosiers that you were not to be believed, just made them volunteer. Abraham Lincoln asked him for 10,000 Hoosiers, he sent 20,000. As a result, Indiana had the second highest volunteer rate in the Confederate, or in, I mean, in the Union Army. So anyway, anything Abraham Lincoln wanted, he got. And he was really called a soldier's a governor because anything the soldiers wanted, the governors have to pay for that. They, the government now pays for everything. We have army guys and stuff like that. The government pays for all that. In the Civil War, the states had to pay for that. Bring and had army, everything you want, army, their clothes and what else have you. And he, was, he loved the soldiers and he tried his best to make them comfortable. So this is him. Uh, something interesting about it was that in uh, 1859, we had an election here, and we had another governor by the name of uh, Wallace, and he was a teetotaler too, but he took it out of the bo bo bottle. <laughs> but anyway, there's another guy with him named, uh, I shouldn't tell you this because I forget his name. Anyway, we had two governors in 30 days. And so on November, we had to have an election. And so he was supposed to be lieutenant governor and another guy by the name Lane supposed to be governor. Well, when, uh, Lane uh, wanted to be senator and way back then, they didn't trust you guys to be choosing them senators. So they picked the senators that each state had in the state assembly. And so they told him, well, since you were vice president, I mean, lieutenant governor anyway, we're going to make you uh, governor. And for believe it or not, for 105 days, we had four governors on, in Indiana. The first guy died, the other one lost the, uh, the uh, election, and these other two guys gave up the thing, and what else have you, and he became the fourth one. In 1816, Indiana became the 19th state. And believe it or not, in 1860, there was no summer. No summer. No summer. Hoosiers almost <laughs> frozen, died, what is have you. Scurvy was quite rapid in 1816. We had some pigeons here in Indiana called uh, Matt pa uh, pit, uh, <coughs> passenger pi pi pigeons. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were pretty dumb. And people tap them upside the head and eat them, throw them in the pot, whatever. <laughs> as a result, we don't have no more pat. Believe it or not, we don't have no more uh, passengers here, here because people ate them so much. There were no, there was no uh, summer. We had winter, what else have you? Nobody knew what happened, but what happened way back was in Indonesia. 
way over there. They had a volcano hooked out there, and, and as a result, we had no summer. It, it, it was snowing in July, August, and everything else. People froze to death, and like he had a lot of scurvy and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Any questions? Yes. Is this yes, his ma'am. original stone? You're a little hard. I'm a little hard hearing. Is this his original stone? It looks new. Uh, yes, yes. This is more. This is granite. Okay. This is marble up here. Yeah. And that, and another five years, we won't see nothing there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am.